In the previous two videos, we learned about module scope and module wrapper. In this video, let's learn yet another important concept, which is module caching. To help you understand what module caching is all about, let me create a new file. superhero.js Within the file, I'm going to create a superhero class. Class superhero. And we're going to add a constructor to initialize the superhero's name. This dot name is equal to the passed in name. I'll also add two methods to get and set the name. Return this dot name. Set name receives a name and assigns it to this dot name. Finally, I'm going to export an instance of this class. Module.exports is equal to new superhero and we pass in name as Batman. Back in index.js, I'm going to start fresh and require the superhero module. I'll store the returned value in a constant called superhero, which would be an object. In the next line, I can log superhero.getName and if we run node index in the terminal, we should see Batman logged in the console. I can also call setName, so superhero, dot set name passing in superman and log get name again rerun the code node index and we see superman from the new log statement i hope this is clear now though i'm going to require the superhero module again to create another instance of superhero so const new superhero is equal to require dot slash superhero. In the next line, I'm going to console log new superhero dot get name. If you were to run this code now, what do you think is the output of new superhero dot get name? Pause and think about it. If I run node index, you can see the new superhero name is also Superman. Now why is that? Clearly, we are creating a new instance of superhero which should receive Batman as the name. Shouldn't the log statement also be Batman? Well, this is where the concept of module caching comes into picture. In Node.js, when we require a new module, it is loaded and cached for subsequent loading. In our case, on line one, the superhero module is loaded and cached. Now cached is simply a fancy word for remembered. So the next time we require the same module on line six, Node.js will think, hey, I remember this module has already been loaded before. Let me reuse that instead of doing the additional work of loading it brand new. In our case, it is going to load the same object as line one. Since objects are passed by reference, we get the same superhero object whose name has been modified to Superman. This is how module caching works in Node.js and is the reason you see Superman being logged again instead of Batman. In a real world application, the same module is typically imported in several different files and caching is what helps with performance. All right, let's debug this code and understand how caching works. I'm going to place a breakpoint on line one and click on run and debug. We can see the local variables being populated. Double underscore directory name, which points at Node.js 
double underscore file name, which points at index.js and module is the current file index.js. Module.exports is an empty object. I also want to expand the require function and show the cache currently has index.js. Now I'm going to step into the function call, which brings us to the superhero module. Double underscore file name is updated to superhero.js. And so is the require function cache. We now have an entry for superhero.js. After running line number 15, you can see that module.exports is now populated with an instance of the superhero class. Proceed, and we are brought back to index.js. Superhero constant now contains an object with the property name set to Batman. If I proceed to set name and step into the function call, we are brought back to superhero module where we update the name with Superman. Come back to index.js and you can see superhero is now an object with name set to Superman. But now comes the interesting part. I'm here at the second required statement for the superhero module. If I step into the function call, the execution does not bring us back to the superhero module. It goes straight to the next line. That is because when loaded, Node.js sees the module is already cached. You can see the entry here in require.cache. Node.js reuses this instead of loading it brand new. The code inside superhero.js is not parsed again. The same superhero object with name set to Superman is returned. Hopefully, the concept of module caching is now clear to you. Well, if caching is really important, how do we deal with scenarios where we need to create separate instances of superhero? Well, it is simple. Instead of exporting an instance that we can import, we export the class itself. So module.exports is equal to the superhero class. Now back in index.js, we can alter our code as follows. Const superhero is equal to require superhero. Const batman is equal to new superhero passing in batman as a string and we can call batman.getName. We can also call batman.setName and pass in Bruce Wayne. In the next line, call batman.getName again. And then we can create a new superhero instance. So Superman is equal to new superhero passing in Superman. Let's also log Superman dot get name. If we now run node index, we see Batman, Bruce Wayne and Superman. The output is as expected. Make sure you've understood this right since modules imported and exported incorrectly may lead to unexpected bugs. All right, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.